All right, the big day has arrived, and that thing that I think you guys are gonna really like is here. So let me go get something to open the package up. We have the package opened, and it doesn't look like I have been radio TV phono nutted. You guys already tell what's in there? I'm sure you can from the video name. Oh. There was a little bit of that, but that's a bit more than what was on the original picture. It was packed decent enough. It's not broken. <laughs> not completely destroyed. And yes, that half of the dial was missing. This is a 1967 Sony. 500 TV-500U uh, micro TV, like what Shango 66 fixed up. Uh, why don't I set this over there? I smell cherries. Get that down there. Which? Oh. Oh, uh, that that can be fixed. Yeah, both of those can be fixed. It got a little cracked up. But it was that was there in the picture. That's new. Um, fine tuning. Then you got UHF there. That's a bit of a disappointment. Since that's actually plastic broken. But... Nineteen sixty-seven, uh, and in the listing it had the power cord. Which did they include the power cord? Doesn't look like they did. That's okay because, as you can see, you can just fit a normal power cord in there. I only need the one hundred and seventeen volts DC part, or I mean AC part. Oops, the stand fell down. It's kind of tricky. But let's get it powered up. There's all the controls up there. Looks like you have headphone outputs and tape recorder out outputs. And I'm going to have to build... Oh, cool. I'm going to have to build... Uh, jack coming out of there. That's, I think that's 75 ohm. Yeah, that's 75 ohm. Headphone jack as an antenna jack. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how that'll work out. But anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll build something. We'll be able to use this. Mm, yes, yeah, very smooth. That knob was cracked in the photo. But let me get this apart and we can make sure that no parts are blown up. So I got the back off. There's a little speaker right there, Sony. Everything in here is going to be branded Sony since Sony is, I think, still one of those companies where it's like it's only them that's going to manufacture their stuff. Uh, look at that little CRT. It's dusty, I mean, and I compressed air this thing. So, it, I think, has a bit of hours on it. Very cool. These are full black and white televisions. There is no thing that one of these doesn't have... Or, okay, let me start that sentence over. A 13-inch Sony black and white UHF VHF will have all the same things this one will have. So, this is a full-on black and white television. The only thing that's been reduced is the size. Look at that filter. So, I don't see anything blown up or arced in here. So, I think we're good to test it. I'm What I'm expecting to have is there to be one vertical line going through the CRT. And that is because that is a very common issue with these. Uh, and with all Japanese black and whites of the 60s. 
is to just have one vertical line going through the screen. So if you want to use one of these, you have to recap it. It isn't really an option. That's quoting Shango 66. Uh, so that's my source on that one. Which I agree with him since Japanese electrolytics were not the best of this era. Typically you can get away with American stuff uh, for a little bit, but Japanese stuff has pretty much got to go. I really like the ingenuity on this thing though. Uh, and I think we're going to test it now. I'm going to have to get the pin out for that plug. I think it's just the two top ones are AC. But it might be like the top left and bottom right, as I've seen on some power cords of this era that are four pin like that. So yeah. The second half of the dial does not bother me really at all because I won't be using this section. The only section I'll be using is three. Right there. Uh, so, I'm going to get a pin out of that power cord and then we're going to power this thing up. Hopefully it won't explode. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's been since this thing's been used. I'm a little scared of it. it goes nothing. It's powered up. Ah, look at that. We got a picture. You guys can see it on the camera, and it's a full picture too, not just a blank line. Uh, the brightness, the brightness has turned all the way down. That's why it's so dark for me. I can barely see it. But that was a pretty quick warm-up time. I'm I'm surprised. Let me just turn this off before I blow some components with all the bad capacitors. But now I feel much safer tur turning this thing on. So now we got our contrast up. Brightness was all the way up, but contrast was all the way down. So it's going to be all black and stuff. So let's try this again. So yeah. It's pretty dim, but I'm assuming that's due to capacitors along with, um, sorry, the camera. There we go, now it's a little better. Just picture it without all the lines going through it. But it looks like it's reaching out to the corners too. Uh, obviously horizontal and vertical need to be adjusted, but that's what those controls on the top are. And I think I am feeling raindrops, so we will quickly power this off. It's warm enough though. That's for sure. Now we have the volume up a little bit. There you go. Volume works too. I am definitely going to recap this TV because it needs it if you're going to use one. And it looks like brightness is coming up a little bit. But this will be a fun project. Uh, we know it works. And that is definitely good to know. Um, which is rare that these don't have just a vertical, super bright vertical line going through them. That's pretty rare that there's actual horse or vertical on the screen. But, and I, I can't pick up anything because analog is completely gone in my area. And I'll have to build a little connector on the side for this thing. But it'll be a fun, cool project. Well, I just kicked up the Variac a little bit. It's at 90 volts. I forgot about that. And the picture is completely there now, and it's bright. And that's only at 104 volts, too. So yeah, it works, which I, I'm very impressed by that. I'm still gonna recap it, like I said, and check the resistors and um, transistors that I can check, but it works. Very cool TV. So that is a demonstration of my new 1967, new old, uh, Sony solid state, not completely solid state. This is a hybrid set, has a tube rectifier apparently, um, maybe some other tube things on it, some kind of output, uh, maybe not. Anyways, uh, 1967 Sony TV 500U, fully working. Very impressive. I'm still going to do everything to it, but yeah.